sort of piggyback off of what um, the, the previous uh, Georges was talking about um, in terms of like what we can do to deal with um, the, the groups, uh, the alt, not just the alt-right, but the far uh, left, far right groups rather. Um, there's talk now in the United States about putting together some kind of uh, truth and reconciliation commission to address uh, the history, the long, long history that the United States has um, with racism. I mean, our institutions are sort of built on racism, right? A lot of stuff uh, not addressed. Okay, so yeah. Um, currently right now, there is a, uh, a resolution. Uh, it's a concurrent resolution with the Senate. Uh, I'm just, I forgot to put in the Senate's number, but it's House Concurrent Resolution 19, proposing the establishment um, in the United States of a commission to address uh, racial healing, uh, truth, and transformation. Um, I believe in the House it was introduced um, again in February of this year by uh, Barbara Lee, Representative Barbara Lee, and in the Senate it's uh, Senator Cory Booker. Uh, so it's a it's a joint joint resolution here. Um, right now it's, it's still in the initial stages. It's gone to like subcommittee, I believe, right now. Okay. Um, but the purpose of the this uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I'll say TRC for short, is to um, address past actions taken by the federal government to specifically prevent persons of color from enjoying the same rights and privileges as white Americans. And there's a whole long list of stuff here. This is just some of it. So this TRC that's being proposed will address things like the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, uh, which uh, prevented citizenship for um, persons of Chinese descent, persons coming over from China, but it did allow, interestingly enough, uh, women of, uh, of China um, who were used in the uh, sex trade, sex trafficking, things like that. Um, you also have the federal Indian boarding school policies of the 1800s and up, uh, trying to, in a way, uh, cleanse the uh, the Native Americans of their Native Americanness, and there's a whole uh, Canada also did this, and there's a whole horrible history that Canada is dealing with right now um, about uh, the schools in Winnipeg, in particular. Um, they've been finding mass graves and things like that. Um, so we kind of had a similar thing here. Um, there are also policies, this TRC will address policies that were adopted by the Federal Housing Administration uh, to prevent uh, African American residents from obtaining home ownership. And there's a really good book, uh, if anyone's interested, it's called The Color of Law by um, Rothstein, I believe is his name, that addresses this and sort of has brought this to the attention. A lot of people just in the country just simply don't know about any of these policies, particularly the younger generations, but even generation, you know, Gen X, like me, we, I had no idea about this stuff and I teach political science. Um, this TRC will also deal with the Trail of Tears, uh, the Tulsa Race Massacre, um, the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, which permitted unions in this country to discriminate against um, African Americans and persons of color. Um, of course, we have the uh, issue of Japanese internment during World War II. Uh, the removal of Mexicans and Mexicans of American descent from the United States, de deporting them, uh, policies from the 1930s to the 1950s, annexation of Puerto Rico, colonialism in the Pacific, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so the purpose of this, uh, the TRC, would be to bring all of this to the, the uh, providing information, to, uh, bring all this out so that uh, the American public uh, can know about these things because a lot of this stuff, most is not taught in our schools. So um, this is one of the things that uh, you know really just to broaden the conversation to really address uh, the, the you know bad policies of the federal government. Okay, which is what this is partially what a what a TRC is supposed to do. So next I'll talk about what is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, one of the best examples is the South African TRC, which I'll talk about um, in a minute. But a, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it's, it's not an adversarial process like a court, like a regular, what we think of as regular conventional courts, right? Where you have one side versus the other and a judge who decides the fate and all of that, or a jury. Um, a TRC is really, it's an informal process 
where you're bringing together uh, the perpetrators as well as the victims, the victims' families um, to come forward and to, to, to share their story, to share what happened. Um, the purposes of a TRC are really closure. That's one of them. Uh, closure for the victims, hopefully. Um, the establishment of a some type of historical record. And this is probably one of the most important um, consequences of a TRC is to put everything on the record, right? So what the perpetrators did, what, uh, what the victims experienced, the historical context in which all of this um, violence, these episodes of violence occurred. Um, and the end goal, of course, to establish what's known as restorative justice. Right, so there's a, a great body of literature um, dealing with, a lot of it's the um, uh, literature on transitional justice, uh, but it deals with restorative justice. So the goal being to bring people together, you know, garner empathy uh, between the different parties, establish a historical record, have a conversation, address these issues, and one of the long-term goals is to really establish positive peace. So a lot of positive peace is not going to require, besides just establishing a historical record, um, policy changes. How can we address, how can we address these deep-seated, long-term, you know, deeply embedded historical inequities? Um, really dealing with structural violence. How can we address the structural violence that occurs? Um, so again, the best example, of one of the, I, I would consider it the best example, one of the more successful examples is the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission that was established pursuant to the um, promotion of National Unity and Reconciliation Act of 1995. So here we're dealing with, in the context of South Africa, addressing uh, the system of apartheid. Uh, formally established uh, at the end of World War II um, and lasting up until the, uh, the early 1990s. Okay, so uh, for those, most people I think are familiar with apartheid, but just a, a brief overview, you establish um, really separate structures for whites and blacks. Um, so the blacks, uh, it, it's kind of similar to Jim Crow in the United States, but it was more deeply enmeshed in South Africa, then Jim Crow is sort of sporadically applied across, I mean, in the South certainly, but uh, in the, the North, it, it wasn't quite as widely institutionalized as apartheid, right? So um, you're dealing with, uh, you know, no voting rights for Blacks, separate living conditions, working conditions, everything in South Africa, um, and race relations, interracial relations were strictly prohibited. Um, we had that here too in the United States, um, but we, our progress, I think, in ending that came earlier than, much earlier than it did in South Africa. Um, but the establishment of the TRC in South Africa was part of the, pre, the peace process. So rather than simply putting everybody on trial, which that was certainly an option. I mean, a lot of the ANC wanted to just put these, you know, national party guys um, the Afrikaners on trial for all the bad stuff that they did, they decided to go this way. Um, again, I guess looking not simply at the, the short-term uh, consequences of ending apartheid, but looking at the big picture, because we all have to live together, right? We are in a situation where the vast majority of the population is African, Black, or mixed race, and then a small percentage is the, the settler, the white population. So um, Mandela and de Klerk realized that, you know, we're going to have to live together, so there must be a, a better way to address the past, and so they opted for the TRC. And in the TRC, you also had, it wasn't just the Afrikaners, the National Party, that were uh, brought forward as perpetrators, they also addressed the violence that the ANC, African National Congress, had perpetrated. Okay, so it's a, it's a multifaceted process here. You had three committees. Uh, one dealing with reparation and rehabilitation. Uh, you had one dealing with amnesties. So for uh, the perpetrator, uh, you're going to, to tell your story to the TRC in order to get amnesty, you know, you're, it has to be, you know, uh, I guess you could sort of following orders, but um, you had to have, be sincere in your um, appeal to get that amnesty. And there was also a human rights violations committee. 
Um, in the end, they produced a multi-volume report um, addressing different aspects of apartheid. One was dealing with the historical context. One, I think the first volume was dealing strictly with um, uh, providing information. I mean, just uh, strictly, this is what apartheid was. This is how we're going to conduct the, the committee and so forth. But you had different volumes addressing a different aspect. Um, uh, Desmond Tutu, Archbishop, uh, was the, the chair of the, the TRC. And you had a lot of heavyweights that were involved um, from civil society in South Africa involved in the process. Okay, um, there's some things that the, the TRC didn't really deal with like economic discrimination. Um, and that's one of the things that the TRC has been faulted for. So not every Truth and Reconciliation Commission is perfect. A lot of countries have tried this, a lot of countries now, um, and uh, some with more success than others. And we could talk about that in the uh, question and answer period if you want. Um, okay, so issues associated with and or requirements for a successful TRC. Um, sort of kind of hitting the high points here. Um, there was an article, uh, for those of you who are familiar with um, the international relations literature, there was an article written by uh, Snyder and Vinja Murray a few years ago, I wanna say like early 2000s, that was dealing with whether a truth and reconciliation commission is a good idea. Should you postpone it? Should you not have it? Um, and they looked at justice from uh, what they call uh, the logic of consequences, the logic of appropriateness, and the logic of emotions. Logic of consequences looks at, okay, should we just give everybody an amnesty? And because the end goal here is political stability. Okay, we don't wanna rock the boat. We don't wanna uh, create a civil war or a potential for a race war or something like that. So uh, under the logic of consequences, we will just simply, uh, you know, do an amnesty or what's the least harmful thing we can do. If we do have trials, we're only going to focus on these people over here, right? So we're strictly looking at what is the bad stuff that could come out of this. Logic of appropriateness, which I didn't include in here, but, but scholars that like logic of appropriateness are people that want, let's have a trial. Let's have some kind of international tribunal. Um, the folks that were in support of uh, the International Tribunal for Yugoslavia or uh, folks that are in favor of International Criminal Court. You know, let's have, it's, it's the best way, it strengthens international law, you know, it, it stops or enables deterrence, you know, it, it's more looking at the long-term picture. Logic of motions, according to Snyder and Vinci Marie, applies to the TRC stuff. Okay, so here um, they sort of, they downplay it, you know, they say it's, it's, you're just strictly appealing to, you know, making the victims feel better, or um, you're just looking at, you know, things like catharsis and closure and all of that kind of stuff, which they really downplay as, you know, it's, it's going to open up a can of worms, it's going to be a bad idea. Um, but, but these are things that like you could sort of using their framework, would it having a TRC now and by now, let's just say within the next year or two, would that be a good idea at the stage where the United States is at now, right? And um, some of the stuff we heard about, you know, the, the, the far right groups, and then we have, we're so politically polarized, is now the right time to do this, you know? Or if we do go into the future, you know, how far in the future should we go? Um, should we wait to, uh, by, by the future, I mean, should we put this off until, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, that sort of thing. Um, another issue to deal with when we're talking about um, a, a TRC is what role is the government going to have in the process? Um, all of these Truth and Reconciliation Commissions, the government's going to be involved, right? I mean, you do have some like people's tribunals where there's one for Brazil, um, uh, the friend of mine uh, was in it a few years back. Um, it, it's, it's not sanctioned by the state. It's just people kind of doing stuff on their own. The really successful TRCs, I mean, the state's got to be part of the process. So what role is the government going to play? You also have the context in which that truth and reconciliation is occurring. So is it, if it's occurring in the middle of a situ situation where you have widespread political instability, it's probably not a good idea. 
um, it's probably not going to work out really well, right? So, um, and you also have, when I say context, well, I guess that sort of, it kind of leads into resources, um, you know, how much money do you have to put into this, the TRC? Um, are you going to have, uh, will you be able to produce the volumes and distribute the volumes widely? Because in the end, of course, you know, the TRC is supposed to uh, make everybody aware of uh, the history. Um, can you do that? Um, in cases like Haiti, Haiti had a TRC um, a few years back. Haiti, I mean, politically and politically unstable, doesn't have a lot of uh, money to, to put into this because the TRC has to go around to all the different parts of the country. They couldn't put forth a, um, a big, uh, like the, the big volume set that the, the South African one did because they simply didn't have the money to do it, right? So that's gonna be an important, an important thing. You also have the, uh, the temporal mandate of the, the TRC. Um, how, how far back are, are you gonna look? Um, how long are you going to last? Uh, is this going to be something that's going to take place over 10 years? Is something that's going to take place, they're going to try to knock this thing out in a year, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, the, the focus of the TRC, are you looking at the big picture? And I think with the US, you are, with the one that they're proposing, they're looking at a whole lot of different, a whole lot of different things. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but in some cases, are you looking, uh, other countries that have tried this, you haven't, they haven't looked at the big picture, right? They just looked at maybe a specific incident or they looked at uh, political crimes and not economic crimes or economic discrimination. Um, and that, again, like I said, that's one thing that the South African TRC was faulted for, right? Because it wasn't just separate living conditions. You had to go into all the whole long history of you know, economic disenfranchisement and they really didn't tap into that. Right, and, that, and that's a big part of the picture too. Um, and again, the, the appropriateness of the TRC, uh, what I also mean by this is when we're talking about large scale systematic crimes would fall under the, uh, the rubric of maybe genocide or crimes against humanity, which a lot of uh, the, the stuff that I showed before in that, in that previous slide, looking at the things that uh, they're talking about like Tulsa and um, you know some of these other uh, widespread violence uh, episodes of widespread violence is a TRC really appropriate or I mean but again like some of the stuff happened a long time ago what can you do right I'm talking when I talk about the appropriateness of the TRC I think it's more like in a current sort of context um, would uh, I'll give you an example um, and some countries do this they'll try, Rwanda kind of did this they'll put people that were guilty of killing uh, they, they put them in there, they allowed their gachacha, which was their TRC, uh, to address those, those crimes. Um, and violence is, you know, killing more contemporary is not, I don't think it's necessarily appropriate for a TRC to handle that. Those guys need to be tried and, you know, the regular conventional system. Um, with a lot of our stuff, it's historic, what the, the TRC in the United States, that TRC is talking about. Um, but again, like if uh, a more current example, if we were going to, instead of uh, prosecuting the cops that killed George Floyd, uh, have a TRC, that would clearly be inappropriate, right? I mean, those guys need to be, you know, and they were, right, uh, you know, tried, convicted, and, you know, let justice take its uh, due course there. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest ones for the United States, um, and I'll kind of end with this, because um, I'm sure there's, you know, I'll answer a lot of questions in the Q&A, but um, is a TRC now a huge political gamble, right, um, for the Biden administration and the Congress? Is, is this the right time when there's so much other things going on and there's the political polarization in our country is so deep? Um, would this really help? I think that um, perhaps if you were to include, I mean, discussion of in this TRC, discussion of the, um, the far right groups. Then you have the question, of course, like if you bring those people in to talk, um, are you legitimizing their, uh, their whole situation, their whole argument, right? I mean, are you giving them a platform to spew, right? So there's always gonna be questions like that. 
Um, but if we were to have a TRC, I think we would have like, um, you know, members of civil society, historians, scholars, political scientists to come together and to talk about this stuff. And of course, the people that were um, that, that suffered from this, you know, and their and their families. Um, but again, I, I, there's still the question of the political gamble is now the right time to do this. Um, but then, of course, you know, if we if now is not the right time, then when, you know, um, I, we may be I think the United States right now we're in a in a critical juncture using that institutionalist terminology that I know so well. Um, now may be the time to do this, maybe, potentially. Um, and of course, you're gonna have to look at if we do decide to go this way, if Congress does approve this, what's the role of the state gonna be in the process? And this is gonna sort of tap into like the, the critical race stuff that's going on right now, the debate. Um, are we just gonna condemn the past? Um, is this a way for us to say, you know, what happened in Tulsa was bad, um, but we're still a good nation, let's move on? Or are we really going to address the deep-seated racial inequities in society, right? And then, of course, what kind of truth are we putting forth, right? I think in the United States, you're always going to have, even if we're talking about, you know, Tulsa and housing policies and Japanese internment, you're always going to have people in our country that just, they, they refuse to accept it. That's right. They just, they just won't listen to it. It's like there's, there's their version and then they're, you know, what the government can say and do what it wants, right? Have this truth commission. Even if they produce a fabulous, you know, multi-complex history of uh, racism in America, there will still be people who will just not buy it. And I don't know what to do about, I mean, what do we do about that? Um, yeah, and again, that sort of leads me to the last point here, um, tying into it, does this add fuel to the fire? Does this add, does this enable them more? I guess, I don't know. Um, I think from a practical standpoint, uh, the United States may be the best possible test case for the for a TRC. We do have the resources, we can put together you know, the, the panels and, and do all that sort of stuff. Um, but the question is going to become, yeah, are we ready for it? Will it actually achieve its intended goal? Will it actually bring closure? Um, and uh, one important thing though, that, you know, recommendations, policy recommendations, TRCs make policy recommendations. Will any of that ever see the light of day? Um, a big thing with the United States government, it's really the way we are set up. It's the institutions, right? So we have so many ways in which any policy recommendations that would come out of this TRC, you know, um, more scholarships for African-Americans, you know, better housing policy, all this sort of stuff will get grounded to a halt in Congress. <laughs> Sorry, I don't end. I can't end really on a high note here. Um, but it will be interesting to see, I believe it will be interesting to see where this goes. I will definitely be interested um, to see that. Thank you.